Hello, hello. Hiya, can I get the whole festive menu, please? Uh, yeah. So that would be, oh gosh, um, Big Tasty, I think, is on the festive menu. Yeah. Like, literally, just every item on it just hit me. Uh, okay, one second. Hello and welcome to another video and it's Christmas. Well, it's not, it's like a week away, but you get the... Anyway, today, two things are going to be happening. Firstly, I'm gonna be trying the entire McDonald's festive menu. That's misleading. I think like entire menu gives you the impression it's gonna be an abundance of food. Not actually that much. And I'm also gonna be doing a Q and A because I figured if I just sat here and ate the food doing nothing, it would be incredibly awkward. And I really wanna encourage that kind of viewership on my channel, AKA absolute freaks who just like watching me eat food. Now, as I always do with these Q and A's, I put a thing on my Instagram story asking for questions. Got about 30,000, so thank you very much. Now, if you're sat there thinking, Matt, I was not involved in this, I did not partake in this Q&A, then you probably don't follow me on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram by now, like if you've watched my videos for a while and you don't yet follow me on Instagram, like I have to question your decision making. Like, what are you doing? Are you actually insane? Just go and follow me now, yeah? In fact, I'll put a link at the top of my description just to make it ridiculously easy. So go and press the link to Instagram and then follow me. Okay, we're in. Now, I'm not gonna set a timer, I'm just gonna kind of freestyle it, which means it'll probably end up being about three and a half hours long. Um, this is quite weird, isn't it? Like, just eating food whilst I talk. I'm quite concerned as to how it's gonna pan out because like eating, I mean talking whilst eating is an uncomfortable thing to watch so hopefully it's not too strange. Now food wise, I don't actually know what these things are. I'm gonna refresh my memory. Okay, so we have a Christmas Big Tasty. I don't know, I mean I'm not a Big Tasty connoisseur so I don't know the difference between a, a Christmas Big Tasty and a normal one but from the looks of it, it's just a massive burger with loads of weird, horrible sauce in it. A festive chicken deluxe, again, I don't really know what that is. I'm probably a bad person to do this because I don't really eat much McDonald's other than Big Macs. A bag of weird cheese chicken nugget looking things. A matchmaker's McFlurry. And a millionaire latte, which I haven't tried, but I'm almost certain it's gonna be disgustingly sweet. I mean, that's basically a hot chocolate. Okay, questions at the ready now. The format I like to abide by is just that of a random uh, selection, so I'll just scroll through the questions and pick some out. Obviously, if I pick one out and it's like horrendously offensive, then I'm not gonna do it, but like generally speaking, we're gonna try and catch me out. I want them to be like candid. Is that the right word? Question one, Josh underscore Palmer. Can you follow me? No. Okay, big tasty initial review. The burger's fine, but like, there's so much mayonnaise and whatever that brown, orangey cream stuff is, and it's not very nice. Brandon Sloan 21, sum up 2019 in seven words. I think 2019 was Sot Dim 2 should we like and subscribe? The fact that you've even had to ask that question makes me seriously doubt my capabilities as a YouTuber. Like, obviously you do, yes. If you're watching a video, right? If you're watching my videos and you, and you like me, even like you slightly like me, why would you not? It takes you 10 seconds. Just press the like button, it helps me out. Subscribe, like that's just a no-brainer. Like, admit, yeah, fair enough, if you think I'm an absolute bellend and you hate my videos, then of course don't like and subscribe, like that would be nonsensical, but I'm assuming if you're watching my videos, you like me in some way, so like and subscribe. Okay, these cheese things are actually sick. Definitely best item so far. I've got water, by the way, because the only drinks they had are like, the only festive drinks they had are a, um, the millionaire black latte, which is probably the least thirst quenching drink on the planet. It's annoying there's not like a Christmas Fanta or something. Hector, MHH, Hector Murr. Questions are getting more serious now. What do you think about Game Changers on Netflix? Um, so, I watched it, and initially I think like a lot of people I was kind of like, I wasn't like mind blown, but I was definitely really surprised and shocked, and it definitely made me question some of my, my choices, however, Upon further inspection, aka watching some people's feedback on it, so for example, like Lane Norton, who's a very clever guy, a very like qualified guy, basically tore it apart. It's not, it's not founded on much actual research, and the research it is founded on is not particularly good research. So, although I definitely think, like, just categorically, I think a vegan lifestyle is better for the planet, probably better for your health, and is more generally more sustainable. Um, I don't think it's as like that. That documentary was very one-sided. It only presented one side of the argument and therefore I wouldn't say, I think some people like watch that, that, that documentary and they were like, well, that's it, I'm going vegan now. Like if you want to go vegan, that's brilliant. And like I, I think at some point in my life I may even go towards that direction, but don't go vegan because of that documentary because I don't think that's a very good um, scientific based 
documentary. Okay, I forget what this is, like a chicken something, but it's really good. Hannah Reedy 8, where are you going skiing? No question mark, I'm tempted not to answer that, but I will, because I'm a nice guy. We're going to Courchevel, like the French Alps, in a few weeks. Um, only for like four days, but I'm excited AF. I know it's expensive, but if you get the chance ever to go skiing on snow, definitely do it, because it's honestly one of the funnest things like you can do as a human. Chris underscore Bell, cleverly using a one instead of an I. Um, what's the most ridiculous fact you know? Oh, a good one. Um, so elephants, right? Elephants use their trunk as a hand, essentially. Right? They use it to like pick things up, and it's quite dexterous, right? They also smell with that. Like what the hell? Imagine, imagine your hand being your nose. Imagine smelling with your hand. How friggin' weird is that? Reese underscore Owen White. Would you recommend training deadlifts on a pool day or a leg day? Um, it depends. Like generally speaking. A deadlift should be a lower body exercise, like it should be predominantly glutes and hamstrings, they should be the two prime movers, however, it kind of, if you pull sumo, like wide stance, that's going to be more so the case, like if you if you pull with a strict sumo, your back basically doesn't get touched, if you pull with conventional form, uh, particularly if you have some rounding of your back, then it's going to be way more of a back based exercise compared to sumo. Ideally, you should always be shooting, like I said, for your hamstrings and glutes to be the most kind of engaged, uh, involved muscle group. Therefore, I would generally put it in a leg day. Um, but like I said, if you were pulling conventional, you could probably justify putting it in a back day. Chicken things are really good. Vegan foodie underscore Oz, would you consider going vegan? Uh, kind of touched on that briefly a minute ago. Like, yes, I have and I would consider it. I think um, if I didn't train, if I wasn't fussed about uh, physique and stuff, and I was just like just being a normal person, trying to have a like a you know a, a healthy, prolonged existence. I probably would be more inclined to do it. And my biggest kind of thing that's stopping me from doing it is that, firstly, I really like food, and like although there are more options available now in this area in particular, there are still lots of things that I couldn't really eat, like certain things that I wouldn't be able to get, which would kind of suck. So that's one reason. The other one is protein now protein is 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 easier to get as a vegan now than it was like a year two years ago but it still would be harder and the amount of fiber i'd have to can i'd have to consume to get enough protein would probably not be ideal ben nocta what are you doing when you aren't training or filming youtube videos um i think people don't realize there's so much when you are like a social media person there's so much crap that comes with that not not bad stuff but just admin type things that you don't even realize that takes so much time, like I'll spend hours and hours and hours every single day sat on my laptop or, or like on my phone doing bits like, I don't know, just planning stuff and like emails and captions and, and pictures and like my training plans and the Facebook group for my training plans and then like thumbnails, titles, chatting to brands, like the list goes on, there's so many kind of, yeah, not menial but like maybe less important things that I have to do which like take up a lot of my time. This is good, this is like um, just like mint chocolate chip ice cream. Oh, and I also like, obviously hang out with Luca and Sayers and do cool stuff like go away, etc. Relax and ride. Why does Sayers find you attractive? Hello? Tristan.hd. I understand your metabolism, but how can you eat so horribly sometimes and be so shredded? Um, so like, you burn a certain number of calories, right? If you burn the, the amount of calories you consume, i.e. if you consume 3,000 calories a day and you burn 3,000 calories a day, your body will stay the same in terms of body fat, right? It won't put on body fat, it won't lose body fat. Um, so basically, long story short, the amount of fat you gain or lose is determined by uh, the amount of calories you consume almost entirely. There is an element of macronutrients, i.e. if your protein is too low, that's gonna kind of have like a bit of an impact, but generally speaking, 90% of the equation is just the number of calories you consume. So what that basically means is, you can eat crap and still lose fat and build muscle. In fact, there are um, a plethora of examples of people that have eaten nothing but fast food, like absolute garbage for like months, and at the end of that period, they've managed to lose fat, um, improve their cholesterol, improve their general like health markers. So yeah, that's how I can do it because I obviously don't consume more calories than I'm burning. With that said, it's definitely not something that I would advocate. You shouldn't eat crap food all the time because although you might be able to get away with it in the short term, there are no like super long term studies. There's no study that's analyzed people over the course of 30 or 40 years and the impact that has had on their health at that point. And so yeah, like the best way to approach it is just try and eat relatively healthy 
don't starve, don't like say oh, I'm never gonna eat bad food because that's just kind of setting yourself up to fail. So if you wanna eat some crap from time to time, do it, just do it in moderation. That's the key basically, moderation, right? You can eat McDonald's, just don't eat too much of it. Did I answer the question there? I think pretty sure I answered the question. The Polish one, what was the worst and best thing about being a PE teacher? Um, I would say the, the worst thing is like just teaching as a whole kind of, there's lots of annoying things that come with it. Okay, this is actually horrible, I'm not gonna eat that anymore. Like I think it's just the case for um, loads of like public sector jobs nowadays. There's just so many things you spend your time doing that aren't even like linked to the actual job. So like, we're, like a teacher now will spend so much time filling out stupid forms and like having to write ridiculous things when they're marking, which aren't actually beneficial for anyone just because it's like a, a lot of it is like a box ticking exercise. So it's frustrating because you could be a better teacher. You could spend your time much better like doing things that are gonna make you a better teacher rather than doing that stuff, but you have to do it. The best thing, like loads of, there were loads of cool things, like particularly being a PE teacher. The PE department I was in was sick, like literally I had so many guys, like people that I worked with that were friggin' awesome people that were so funny, like the banter was like absolutely top level. Also like with the kids, like particularly the older kids, like the year 11s and sixth formers, like it was so fun, like it, yeah, they were just funny kids. This has melted so much. Shay Haya, is Ross Barkley your long lost twin? Um, okay, if you're American, you're not familiar with who Ross Barkley is, or I guess if you're not a football fan, um, we do look quite similar to be fair. Matt H. Williams, how tall are you? Matt, I am six foot one. That's actually a very frequently asked question. Tom Orty, how much creatine do you have each day and do you have loading? Do you have a loading phase? Again, people always ask me about creatine. There are so many, I'm gonna try one of it just to kind of confirm that it's bad. Yeah, still bad. Okay, there are so many misconceptions about creatine which are predominantly spread by supplement companies because they obviously want you to use more of it and spend more money on it. You don't need to load it or come off it or do anything with it, you just take five grams a day, which is a, when you buy creatine, you typically get a little tiny scoop in there. That's generally gonna be a five gram scoop. So one of those, once a day, at roughly the same time each day, and that's it. Nuriasa, zero one, what made you support Arsenal? And thoughts on current situation? Um, I guess like my family, my dad made me support Arsenal because we've got lots of Arsenal fans in our family. So that was just kind of it, like an innate thing. I don't, I don't remember not supporting Arsenal. Um, and the current situation, like it sucks. Like it's absolutely, it's actually depressing. Like the last, I guess four or five years in particular of being an Arsenal fan have been very sad. But yeah, as of the time of filming this video, it looks like we're gonna get our Tetris manager. So hopefully that's gonna happen. That'll be exciting. And then it's it onwards and upwards. We friggin' win the quadruple next year. That probably won't happen. Ross Errant's favorite protein from my protein. Um, good question, Ross. So clear way, mm, I've said it a few times now. I've been drinking protein at least twice a day for like six or seven years um, and you get bored of it. You can have the best flavors in the world, but you just, you know, just the act of drinking protein does get very monotonous, particularly if you are bulking and having to eat a lot of calories. For me, there is nothing worse than having to drink a really creamy thick shake. So Clear Way, which is their new stuff, is basically completely different. It's still protein, it's still whey protein, but it's, it's just like a drink. It's like Coke or squash or whatever. It's like a normal drink and therefore it's way easier to drink. It's friggin' nice um, and it's just, yeah, it's just a much more enjoyable experience. So for the last, I don't know, a couple of months, that's been my go-to. I've been drinking that twice a day um, and I friggin' love it. So link to my protein, top of the description. Go and pick up some clear whey. I guarantee you will like it. If you get it and you don't like it, I mean, I'll be amazed. And you're wrong. P.S. They currently have like a ridiculous sale. I checked 10 minutes ago and it was like, up to 75% off, so if you're quick, you can pick it up very, very cheap. Jackson, for real, why do you favor sumo deadlift over a regular stance? Um, I hurt my back like a few years ago, um, and when I pull with a conventional stance, it hurts my back, and when I pull with a sumo stance, it doesn't. Like, sumo stance protects your back. If you're new to deadlifting, if you're just starting out, I would recommend just start using sumo and just get used to it because it's gonna enable you to deadlift a lot more. Um, and ultimately, the more deadlift volume you can accumulate over time, the better you're gonna get a deadlift. Toto Rovers, Rus, Rovers. What's your opinion on eating healthy versus your diet? So, I think, I've said it before, I think people think my diet is worse than it is. Admittedly, my diet is probably worse than the vast majority of people that, that train and you know, take their physique seriously. With that said, like this for example, I don't do this on a daily basis. Like I'd eat fast food maybe like once a week, maybe twice a week. I, I do eat like cakes and chocolate and stuff every day, but like I also eat really healthy, like really healthy meals. Again, going back to my metabolism, like because I have a fast metabolism, 
I can eat more than the average person, right? If the average person eats like chocolate bars every day, the chances are they're gonna get a bit fat. I can do that because I have a lot more calories to play with. Also the term healthy, like healthy eating is is hard to, it doesn't really exist because ultimately what is healthy and what's unhealthy, you can't say that burger is unhealthy. I mean, it is, right, you can say that, but like what I'm saying is that if you were to eat one of those a day and you had a very fast metabolism, you could still lose fat and build muscle whilst doing that, you know, so, yeah, basically what, what is key here is moderation. I said it earlier on, you can eat bad food as long as you don't eat too much of it. And again, the faster your metabolism is, the more you're gonna get away with. Sam.lows.fitness, are you filming a Q&A because you don't know what else to film? Uh, to an extent, yes. Like, I have other videos to make, but I thought like this would be a good one to make. I'm pretty busy this week. Let me just be honest here, right? This goes for me and any other YouTuber. I've said it before. If a YouTuber makes a Q&A, nine times out of 10, it's because they can't be asked to make another video, right? A Q&A, is relatively easy to make. Um, it's just like a good filler video. You know, if someone goes away and they're pushed for time, they might just chuck out a Q&A because it's easy. So to answer your question, yes, to an extent, I'm making a Q&A because I'm busy and this is a quite a quick video to make. But also, it's, it's, it's they're fun, right? I think you guys enjoy them. They're good, like, I've got, over the last, like, six months, an enormous amount of new subscribers, so it's good to, like, share a bit of my life, you know? Oh my God, all of the chocolate stuff's gone to the bottom. The life of... Ye Unus? That looks, all I'm seeing there is anus to be honest. Why don't you do more workout focused content with example workouts with sets and reps, exclamation mark, to exacerbate the point. Um, so I don't make purely workout based videos. Well, I do sometimes, I guess, like the army fitness one, those fitness, that kind of series, that is a purely workout based series, right? But the reason I don't do it, the reason I wouldn't make, for example, chest workout, two things, right? Firstly, is boring, right? Like, there's only so many ways you can train. Like, my sessions generally are exactly the same week on week. That would get boring for you very quickly. Plus, I'm gonna be honest here, like, they don't get views. Like, you guys don't wanna see them, basically, right? I think what works much better is having a bit of everything. So, a bit of food, a bit of, like, vlog stuff, and a bit of training, rather than just all of one thing. Like, if I, let's say I vlog a day, right? And in that day, I go to the gym and I do a chest workout and then I also go and get McDonald's, right? If I call, I can make the exact same video. If I call it chest workout and then I make it again and I call it 3000 calories of McDonald's, they're identical videos, but I'm telling you now the McDonald's title is gonna get 10 times the view. So now considering that's my job, that's my income, like what are you gonna do? Like imagine someone said to you, you're doing your job now, right? You can do exactly the same job, but just tweak one tiny thing that doesn't impact you and you're gonna earn 10 times as much, like you're obviously gonna go for that option, right? Ella Mabel 4, how often do you eat fast food when you're not filming a video? Um, kind of already answered that, like I'd say maybe once twice a week at most. I'll be honest, if I was not married to Sears, probably eat it every day, because I'm a lazy bum and uh, it's just nice, but Sears is a very good influence in the fact that she she doesn't like eating fast food, she likes eating nice, like, homemade stuff, so that's kind of good, because it means that I'm not a disgusting mess. Final question, because I think I've answered quite a lot of questions here. Brendan Bauman, did the Bulgarian squat program, this is a lot of training-based questions, am I right? Uh, did the Bulgarian squat program work for you, and would you recommend it? Uh, so in case you were unaware, the Bulgarian squat program is a program where you squat, you squat every day. You literally go to the gym and squat every day, like every day. Now in terms of did it work for me, like yes, in the sense that my squat got better. The massive downside is that if you start squatting every day, that becomes your norm, right? So firstly, that's quite annoying. Like squatting every day is not particularly enjoyable. It's not very flexible in terms of going to do things. But also, if you if you have even a few days off, you regress very quickly, right? If your body gets used to squatting seven days a week, and then for a couple of weeks you only squat three days a week, your squat performance is gonna is gonna get worse, right? Because your body is used to that huge amount of volume. So basically, what I'm saying is, if you do start doing that program, you have to keep doing it because if you stop, your squat's gonna get way worse and it's gonna suck and be depressing. Oh my God, that's so sweet. Right, I'm done. That's it. We're 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 out. We're we're over. The questions are done. My phone is no longer required. Um, yeah, I, I think this is quite a long video. I think it's quite a weird video. I mean, there's a Christmas tree there, so just like the video because it's festive. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And I will see you tomorrow. Oh.